Hey guys, and welcome to week six of Anatomy and Physiology Lab. This week we'll be covering exercise eight, classification and structure of bones and cartilages, and exercise nine, the axial skeleton. Besides supporting and protecting the body, the skeleton provides a system of levers with which the skeletal muscles work to move the body. The bones store lipids and many minerals. Finally, the red marrow of bones provides a site for blood cell formation. The skeleton is made up of bones that are connected at joints, or articulations. The skeleton is subdivided into two divisions. The axial skeleton, the bones that lie around the body's center of gravity, and the appendicular skeleton, the bones of the limbs, or appendages. The three types of cartilage found in the body are hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. In embryos, the skeleton is predominantly made up of hyaline cartilage. But in adults, most of the cartilage has been replaced by more rigid bone. Cartilage contains no nerves or blood vessels and is surrounded by a covering of dense irregular connective tissue, which acts to resist distortion of the cartilage. You'll see from the examples that hyaline cartilage is the most common type found in the body, whereas elastic cartilage is known for its flexibility. Fibrocartilage provides strength and shock absorption. Articular cartilages, costal cartilages, respiratory cartilages, and nasal cartilages are all different types of hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage is found in the external ear and the epiglottis. Fibrocartilage makes up intervertebral discs, the menisci of the knee, and the pubic symphysis. The 206 bones of the adult skeleton are composed of two basic kinds of osseous tissue that differ in their texture. Compact bone is dense and made up of organizational units called osteons. Spongy bone is composed of small columns and lots of open space. Bones may be classified further on the basis of their gross anatomy into four groups. Long, short, flat, and irregular bones. Long bones are much longer than they are wide, generally consisting of a shaft with heads at either end. Long bones are composed mostly of compact bone. Short bones are typically cube-shaped, and they contain more spongy bone than compact bone. Flat bones are generally thin, with two wafer-like layers of compact bone sandwiching a thicker layer of spongy bone between them. Although the name flat bone implies a structure that is straight, many flat bones are curved, for example, the bones of the cranium. Bones that do not fall into one of the preceding categories are classified as irregular bones, such as the vertebrae. Some anatomists also recognize two other subcategories of bones. Sesamoid bones are special types of short bones formed within tendons. The patella, or kneecap, is an example. Sutural bones are tiny bones between cranial bones. Bones are not completely smooth. They have an array of bumps, holes, and ridges. These bone markings reveal where bones form joints with other bones, where muscles, tendons, and ligaments were attached, and where blood vessels and nerves passed. The bone markings are summarized in Table 8.1. Make sure to spend time studying this table. We will be studying the anatomy of a typical long bone in lab. The diaphysis, or shaft of the long bone, is composed of compact bone, while the epiphysis, or the end of the long bone, is composed mostly of spongy bone. In an adult, the central cavity of the shaft, or the medullary cavity, is the storage region for adipose, or yellow bone marrow. In adult bones, red bone marrow is confined to the interior of the epiphyses. Bone is one of the hardest materials in the body. The hardness of bone is due to the inorganic calcium salts deposited in its ground substance. Its flexibility comes from the organic elements of the matrix, particularly the collagen fiber. Although compact bone appears to be dense, microscopic examination reveals that it's riddled with passageways carrying blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. The central canal, or haversion canal, runs parallel to the long axis of the bone and carries blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels through the bony matrix. Osteocytes, or mature bone cells, in lacuna, are arranged in concentric circles called concentric lamellae around a central canal. 
A central canal and all of the concentric lamellae surrounding it are referred to as an osteon. Also note the conaliculi. Tiny canals radiating outward from a central canal to the lacuna of the first lamella, and then from lamella to lamella. The conaliculi form a dense transportation network through the hard bone matrix, connecting all living cells of the osteon to the nutrient supply. In exercise 8, we will complete activities 1, 2, 3, and 4 in lab. The axial skeleton can be divided into three parts the skull, the vertebral column, and the thoracic cage. This division of the skeleton forms the longitudinal axis of the body and protects the brain, spinal cord, heart, and lungs. The vertebral column is again divided into seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, and the sacrum and coccyx. In order to remember the number of each type of vertebrae, Think about eating breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, and dinner at 5. In addition to the bones and bone markings of the vertebral column, we'll review spinal curvatures such as scoliosis, kyphosis, and lordosis. Although I didn't dive into detail during pre-lab, we'll be spending most of lab this week identifying the specific bones and bone markings of the skull, vertebral column, and thoracic cage. Before you come to lab this week, complete the online Canvas quiz, complete the bone highlighting assignment, print off the axial skeleton master list, and review exercises 8 and 9. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your lab instructor.